Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Hi, y'all. This is Angela Profit. Thank you so much for joining me today on Weddings Unveiled. And I'm so excited to be interviewing Wes Howard, who is one of our very, very favorite officiants, not only in Nashville, but he travels. And I will say he's not your typical officiant, which is really why... Me and my team and also our clients love him. I don't have like in the box clients. I have out of the box clients. And so without further ado, how are you, Wes? Doing well. So excited to be here today. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Well, we'll start off simple. Like tell our audience about yourself and your background and how did you get into the wedding industry? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, married. We have two kids, actually another one on the way. <gasps> Congratulations! Thank I you didn't very know that. much. Yeah, not many people know, but hey, exclusive here first on Weddings Unveiled. You get to know <laughs> the inside scoop. But yes, yeah, so we have another one on the way. Live in Nashville, Tennessee. And I was a pastor at a local church here in Nashville for a while. And so Got into the wedding industry kind of by accident. Had a couple people get married at the church and they asked me to do it. I did their wedding and fell in love with the process of weddings. Just seeing two people come together for that life-changing moment right in front of my eyes was beautiful. And so I kind of got a little addicted to it and started reaching out and making some relationships. And here we are like six years later and I'm no longer at the church. I'm doing weddings and I'm having a blast. And you run it as a business. Yes. Like, it's not like you just do it for fun, on the side, part-time, which even in my field, like, a lot of planners do that. They, like, roll out of bed and they're like, oh, I think I might do this. But I love the fact that not only is your heart in the right place and you love it, but you actually are a business owner, which to me is super important. Just one other reason that we love working with you. Like, what would you say, which I could answer this for you, but I want to hear your take on it. Like, what do you think is special or I guess unique about how you guide couples through the process and then how you actually come up with the vows for their wedding day? Yeah. So I, I tell my couples in our first meeting when we sit down, I tell them I have two passions when it comes to weddings. The first passion is a stranger does not marry you. I don't marry strangers. I've done that one time and I said to myself, I'll never do it again. (laughs) It was awful. And so I tell them, hey, this this isn't the only time we're going to hang out. We're going to hang out again. We're going to build that relationship. So when I show up to your wedding, you're genuinely excited that I'm there. And I am as well. And the second thing I tell my, my couples is... I want their wedding to be everything they want it to be. That means I'll do whatever type of wedding they want. This isn't my chance to uh, prove a point. This is my chance to make a difference in their life. So I've done two Chinese tea ceremonies, which I highly suggest. It's amazing. I've done half Jewish weddings where I got to yell mazel tov. I've done a kind of a, a kind of a, a, a simple Catholic wedding, even though I'm the furthest thing from Catholic ever. I've done non-traditional. I've done, you know, just uh, weddings about love, weddings that have a religious. So I'll do any sort of wedding. And and I think couples really appreciate that. They have total control of their ceremony. I will give them a template. I will share a Google Doc with them. And it is a template. It is a wedding that we could do right now if we wanted to. But they have total control. They can go in and edit anything I say, anything they want to add. I always tell them, if you want to put in, we're going to do five jumping jacks here. Type that in, and we're going to do some jumping jacks at your wedding. They have total, total control. 
I love the personalization. It's it's awesome because now we live in like such a busy, noisy world. And I feel like sometimes our clients like, I mean, they come to me for production. Like they want the wow factor. And when I get to the ceremony portion, they're like, oh, just, uh, you know, whoever. I'm like, well, what kind of person do you want? Like, Mm -hmm. do you care if it's male or female? Do you care if it is, do you want somebody in a robe? Do you want and most of my couples and again like I have a very niche type client but again they want somebody that is a down to earth and just like normal that's not gonna like push something down their throats right and I'm just taking the words out of their mouth and so what are some tips that like you could tell couples or brides that when they're interviewing I guess or like yeah. looking for an officiant like what are some tips that they should look for yeah I'd say the first thing is look for someone who wants to build a relationship with you I always have my clients tell me their story I want to know how they met how they fell in love how how they were proposed. I want to hear their story. And then I want to tell them my story. And so always look for someone who's personable and wants to build that relationship. You don't want someone who's all business. You want someone who's serious about their business, but they also want a relationship with you. And then another thing is they're talking about the ceremonies. Kind of listen listen for keywords uh, about what they want to do in your ceremony. Are they trying to take control? Or are they saying, hey, I've seen this work. We can do it however you want. And then uh, the vows. This is kind of something that I've been able to, to get creative with. It's really, really cool. Obviously, you can uh, do the traditional vows where it's that paragraph to having to hold a love and a cherishing separated by death as God is your witness and you say I do which is great and then the only other option the couples think is that they have to write their own and recite it and usually when I get in a meeting the bride is like I would love to write my own and the groom's like I'm not speaking at <laughs> I'll all. I'll throw up. Yeah I'll throw up. <laughs> That's what they say. And so they get in this little not tiff but like oh but I wanted this but no I don't want to do this. There is a middle ground that has worked beautifully for me. What I'll do is I'll tell them, I'm going to email you two questions. Why Sarah? And what do you vow or promise Sarah in your marriage? And I'll email Sarah the same too. Why Eddie? What do you vow or promise Eddie in your marriage? And they will answer those two questions separately and email me the response. And that I will take that. And on their wedding day, when we get to the vows, I'll say, Eddie and Sarah have chosen to write their own vows. And here's how we did it. I ask each of them two questions, and their answers will serve as their vows today. I first ask Eddie, why Sarah? And I'll step over next to Eddie so I can kind of get out of the shot a little bit. That's, that's important. We'll get to that in a minute. And then I will read Eddie's answers to Sarah. And the reason why this is so beautiful is because it gives Eddie and Sarah a chance to connect. They're not having to repeat after me. They're not having to recite. They're not having to put the finger or put the ring on the right finger. They are just present. And um, for all of you who are married right now, you know that your wedding day can be a blur. And so if we're not intentional about inside your ceremony, creating a moment where you can just be there, present with each other, and remember this moment for the rest of your life, it can be a blur. So this is a cool moment where you're getting to hear your future spouse's heart and why they love you, but also you get to be there and just stare in their eyes and just be present. And it has been beautiful. And I highly recommend you at least talk to your officiant about that option. Bring it up to them because hopefully they'll adopt it and do it as well. Like I don't own the rights to writing your own vows here this creative way. It's something I wish more couples would, would think outside the box when it comes to your wedding. Because seriously, you can do whatever you want at your wedding. You do not have to do this, 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 just because tradition says it. You can do whatever you want at your wedding. And so get creative. Get outside the box. Ask the officiant, hey, what's the most creative thing you've done at a wedding? And if his answer is, well, one time I took two steps to the left, like that's probably not someone that's going to be open to being creative. And so if you want that creative wedding, that personalized wedding, ask those leading questions about how creative they can be and whatnot. That's awesome. And so do couples, do you find these days, like with the different generations, do they still ask you for marriage counseling? And what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So marriage counseling, I don't require my couples to do it. We're all adults. They know what's best for them. But I highly encourage it because going to counseling is a healthy thing. When you get in a room with someone who's just outside of the situation that's trained to to get you talking about things, it's just a positive thing. And and I always tell couples, they're going to ask questions that doesn't 
doesn't really come up during The Bachelor, you know, while y'all sitting there watching The Bachelor, you know. <laughs> Which, by the way, is scripted. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just a little. Just a tad. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's important. You need to check your state and, and kind of see what the requirements are. I know in the state of Tennessee, uh, they'll, if you do four hours of premarital counseling, they're going to give you a little discount on your marriage it's license. It's like 60 bucks. It is. It's like 60 it's bucks. So. You know, it is totally worth it. And so, and then ask your officiant, A, does he do his own premarital counseling? And B, if not, does he have any resources or referrals for you to go and, and, and get that counseling? You need like four to six hours in most states. It, it's, it could be a cost for you, but it is an investment into your marriage because we all know the most important thing in a marriage is communication. 100%. And if you can learn to communicate, you will be successful in your marriage. And so it's 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 something I encourage. I don't require, though. So what are your thoughts on all of these psychology methodologies? Like, do you think couples should do it? Should they not do it? Kind of like horoscope things. Like, should you listen to it? Should you not listen to it? I literally had someone tell me yesterday, I was teaching a class, and they saw the horoscope app on my phone because I was like referencing something about apps, my little tech geekness. And they're like, isn't that like witchcraft, like (laughs) devilish? And I'm like, uh, no. Like, I didn't know what a pagan wedding was. It's happened one time and I'll never do that again. But what are your thoughts around the whole psychology methodology test? I've read every Harry Potter book (laughs) and I am That is fake, Wes. (laughs) That's not real. Growing up, man, I always heard that Harry Potter was like witchcraft. Do not read Harry Potter. But, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, You know, I I think it's kind of every couple has their own personality, kind of their own beliefs. And I kind of just go with the flow. You know, I had a couple that said, hey, his family's very, very Jewish and my family is isn't. What can we do? You know, if I was this hardline rule follower, like I would have said, well, as a believer in this, I'm out. And like I said, I would rather make a difference in someone's life than try to prove a point. And so we came to an amazing ceremony that honors both sides of the family and everyone was happy. I mean, rehearsal was a little clunky because, oh, wait, I'm supposed to walk my son down. No, and actually he walks down in, but it all worked out great. So I kind of, with each couple, kind of try to figure out kind of where they are and whatnot. And I will go with the flow as much as I possibly can. So that brings up a good question. Do you go to rehearsal and do you prefer to have a rehearsal? Yeah. So that, that once again, um, that's kind of like a couple different packages uh, mm-hmm. for my couples. I don't need to be at the rehearsal. Okay. Like I know where I'm standing. I know what I'm saying. I know when I'm leaving. But me at the rehearsal offers a peace of mind for the bride and the groom, I guess. And I will absolutely be there if they want that peace of mind. And if a if a couple has a very customized wedding where Uncle Joe's going to get up and do this, then Aunt Patty's going to stand up and do this, I would actually prefer to be at the rehearsal because I look at their ceremony like a production. Mm-hmm. And so I want Uncle Joe and Aunt Patty to know the exact cue that they're going to stand up because if they don't stand up when they're supposed to, everyone's looking at me like, this dude doesn't know what he's doing. I'm like, no, it's Aunt Patty. Patty, she's supposed to be talking right now, you know? And so I will actually prefer to be at the rehearsal if it's a kind of a bigger ceremony with a lot of moving parts, just so I can make sure that their production, their wedding is going to run smoothly and everyone's going to know what to do. But if it's kind of a, you know, um, not a highly customized wedding, I don't have to be at the rehearsal at all. What are your thoughts on audio? For like, like, do you educate your brides? Like if there's not a planner involved, which we'll talk about that in a minute, but do you tell them about, you know, your guests traveled all this way, especially if it's outdoors? Because you have a great voice. You it it can carry. Mm-hmm. But have you ever ran into any challenges with the whole audio where it didn't work or they didn't provide it? Or is that something that you feel that is important? Yeah, I think audio is very important. You want to capture this day that you've planned for months and months, some people years. And so you want to capture this day. You want to be able to look back on it and whatnot. I will prefer, the only request I have is not to have a handheld mic. (sighs) Yeah. Right? I do not want that in my hand. Uh, it's just, I think it messes up pictures. And I will not have a mic on a stand in front of me. If it comes to that, I will just project. 
But that doesn't happen often. Usually with the clients that I'm involved with, they've kind of fought, thought through and hired someone to make sure they capture the audio and whatnot. It's only been a few times where I've had to make a suggestion, hey, have you thought about capturing this audio because we are going to be outside and the person in the back row, I'm not going to make sure they hear me because I don't want to yell at you, you know? And so that's just something to think about. Like you're efficient. You don't want to be yelled at because he's trying to make sure everyone can hear. I, I'm not going to make sure everyone hears. I'm going to make sure that I am my, my focus is on you. And if, if we don't have audio or projection system, I'm not going to scream at you yeah. in front of me. It happened to me just once. And it never happens again. Yeah. Where we had a, like, it was like 50 people. And the bride's like, I don't want to pay for a sound system. It's really intimate. Like, we're going to be standing in the middle. And, you know, th- this is when I wasn't quite as confident. I didn't have as much experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just kind of like, okay. And then in the bathroom, like, it's amazing what girls in the bathroom. <laughs> when, <laughs> it's like when you're in a stall. I don't know if dudes do that. Like, Literally, I'll never forget this. I don't know if it's a grandma, but it was an older lady. And she's like, we paid $300 for a plane ticket. And I couldn't hear anything that the minister was saying. And I mean, I took accountability for that. Sure. Because I should have stepped up. And in my head, I was thinking it. Which I do think that couples these days are a little bit more aware and yeah. educated especially if they have like a video or cinematography team mm-hmm. like often they'll say you know what's the efficient using and what is the music because they plug into a soundboard to get like raw audio yeah. and then oftentimes they you'll have two microphones yep. that are clipped on you and one is going to the sound system where mm-hmm. the guests can hear you and the other one is going Going to the video input yep. and so was there ever confusion on your part like if you have a video mic and a mic that you're projecting to the guest or you're like duh I know that I mean yeah I, I kind of know yeah uh, what the mics are for I make sure before, while someone's putting a mic on me I'm like all right hey is this thing live do I have to turn it on are you going to be able to handle that yep like Today's technology, they should be able to to be able to push a button where I don't have to do anything with my mic. Yep. It, it should just be able to come on. But usually, you know, I know a lot of the videographers now, and so they'll come yep. up to me and I'm like, "All right, we're doing video, great." You know, so I, I kind of know the yeah. drill now. But yeah, it, whenever whenever they put a mic on you, you, you need to know: do am I responsible for turning this thing on? And B, if I'm not, are you gonna make sure I am muted? Yep. Because you don't want to hear the pre-conversation before the wedding. Or the peeing in the bathroom. Or the peeing in the bathroom. No, it's just funny. Again, yesterday, like, I was speaking at WedTech, and they were talking about how many hits this video had on YouTube with an officiant who his rules were the photographer couldn't move. And it was an outdoor wedding. Oh. It's not like there were, it was at the, the girl's house. But this video ended up on YouTube everywhere because he basically stopped in the middle of the ceremony and said like stop moving i don't know exactly what he said but anyway the lady that was hosting got up and told the story that she covered that on her educational platform and it's the highest hit and most commented thing in like seven years of her education Because videographers, um, music people, like all these planners, like I chimed in and I'm like, you know, I, I grew up Catholic. I, when people are like, what's your religion now? I'm like, whatever my client is that weekend. <laughs> but I actually love and adore the church that, and actually I think that's how I met you through the church that, that you yeah. were formerly at. Um, It's a great church, and they're very welcoming to everyone, but it already is kind of a production, like in a good way. Like, it's on the internet. When I'm traveling, I can watch it. I learn from it. But not every priest or officiant or minister is around that type of production. And so I've literally had people run from the videographers. They're like, I already have a mic. And I'm like, no, you... You know, I'm like, I don't want to call him a dumbass in his own church, but Jesus... 
And like we literally have couples that say, I want the audio from the minister, the officiant, the priest, the rabbi, whatever. They want the original music. And so audio behind the scenes of all that is very nerve wracking, especially when you have an officiant running from you. So like the two boys came to me and they're like, Ange, they like this guy's running from me. Like, I don't know what to do. And so I'm like, okay, you have a backup little handheld thing, right? They're like, yeah, I'm like, let's just hide it in the plants, like up on the altar. I'm like, not supposed to do that. Sure. But then if you don't do what the couple is asking, like then they can't do their job. So it's just, I love the fact that you embrace, it's all about the couple. It's not about you. It's not about the rules. That's what I was going to say. I have been shocked in the wedding industry when I tell a photographer, you need a shot, tell me, I'll move out of the way. Yeah. Like this is about the couple. Yep. Officiants, if you're listening to this, there's two rules I have for you. First, it's not about you. It's not. You were a small player in a big production. If the photographer wants to get a shot of them walking down the aisle from your perspective, move out of the way. Mm-hmm. The second thing, and this is my biggest pet peeve, and I am so surprised every wedding when the photographer tells me, you're the first person that's ever done that. Yep. The kiss get out of the way. You don't want to be on their mantle for all time, okay? When you say, Ben, you may now kiss your bride. Move over. Take three steps to the left. Get over there with the groomsmen. Let them have their moment. I tell the photographer beforehand, hey, you're framing. I'm going to be over here with the groomsmen. Get the frame that you need to get for that kiss. That is an important shot. That is my biggest pet peeve. And every wedding I go to with a new photographer, they tell me, you're the first person that's ever moved out of the way. Get out of the way. It's not about you. I bend over backwards for photographers, for videographers, for anything, because I'm here to make sure this production and this wedding is memorable and it's legal. You know, I got to take care of the paperwork and I'm going to make sure that happens. But it's not about me. I don't get to make requests. I don't get to, to be the man in charge. I'm a small player. And so that's my biggest thing. If you can learn to be a servant, Instead of in charge, you're there to serve this couple. You're an employee of them for the day. And so they're in charge. And so you, you want to be respectful and make sure what you need to happen happens. But also you, you're there to serve their needs. And one of their needs is having great photos. So get out of the way. I love it. What like what would you say is the number one thing? Like the, as far as feedback after the wedding, like what do your clients love about you? Yeah, I always hear my bride and groom tell me we had more comments about you from our guests that said that you were funny down to earth and it was memorable and what you said was very important so you want a mixture of all that you know you want your wedding to match your personality so if i'm with a couple and i find their personality is not outgoing and fun i'll kind of scale back my humor and i'll take out a a joke or two that i usually kind of mix in there but you want to to match the personality and you want to have a tab of humor. This is not your chance to be a comedian, but you know, something to lighten kind of the room a little bit, let them know, oh, this isn't a stuffy wedding where I'm not allowed to sneeze, you know? Like, you want to have a little bit of humor. You want the uh, the message of the, the wedding to get across in a clear and concise way. And so you kind of got to mix all that. So the, the biggest response I get is we have more people come up to me and talk about how great our ceremony was. It's personal. Like, Very you make personal. it personal. Like you Absolutely. said, it's not about you. Like, are there any trends like that you would say are coming up that I know you're a speaker and I know that in the industry people probably perceive you as like the younger cool hip guy like it's hilarious what my brides say to me they're like so we had coffee with Wes we love him he's not what I expected (laughs) and I'm like what do you mean like did you expect some old guy in a robe like you told me exactly kind of what you were looking for that you wanted somebody that was fun and laid back and was going to make it personal and sometimes I have to ask them because they don't know what the hell they want yeah and so it's like again building that relationship but are there trends or do you think it's still the same as it was 10 years ago? Yeah, you so I'm hoping the trend isn't more hip young cool guys getting the game because I've got the corner market right now. You do. Yeah, I love it. So we'll, let's keep it that way. But no, some of the trends that I see is the vows getting creative. 
which is, I think is really cool. And then, you know, at the end of the wedding where you've typically seen people do communion or, or uh, tie a knot or plant a tree or mix some dirt, there's been some other things that couples have been doing that's really kind of cool. Like, I don't know if they're new, but, you know, like the wine box ceremony or the fight box ceremony where... Fight? I had a couple call it the fight box ceremony. I was okay. like, can we call it the wine box ceremony or the Jack Daniels box ceremony? So what exactly is So basically, that? there's this box and you put a, a bottle of wine in it and you write each other a letter. And the, so during the ceremony, I will tell the audience, you know, what, Eddie and Sarah. Yeah, Eddie and Sarah have chosen to partake in a wine box ceremony. They have each written a letter to each other. And they're going to go place the letters in the box and lock the box. At their first spirited uh, disagreement, they will then stop, go open the box, read the letters to be reminded why they chose each other and why they stood there on that day. And they're supposed to uh, have a glass of wine or drink the whole bottle. Who knows? And then you kind of replace it, write some more letters, lock it up. If you make it five years, I don't know if I've ever met a couple men in five years, but if you make it five years, you open it up in celebration. So it's a kind of a cool continuation thing, something that you can uh, you know, remember your wedding by in the future. So that's one thing that I had a, a, had a lot of couples partaking in recently. It was, it's kind of cool. So does that take the place of like a unity candle? It does, most of the time. Uh, okay. Now, and they the could do one. Mm-hmm. Okay. They can do it. We can do every little uh, little cliche thing you want to do. Like, it's your wedding. But typically, it's one or the other. I'm just amazed at like all the different things. Because like I started out, you know, in Catholic church, like everybody does the unity candle. Then I started doing destination weddings. And then we're on a beach and everybody does the sand. Yep. Then it, I think it is kind of a trend, but I actually love it about the whole wine. Yeah. And then people do like the advice box. Yeah. But like guests put advice. And then every time they have a disagreement and not an argument. Yeah. Which is room for growth, opportunity for growth there in a relationship. Go. Um, they pull out like one of the little things. Um, I've even like made scrapbooks for my clients because I'm like, what are you going to do with this later? And it's like, they, they're like, I don't know. We did this at so-and-so's wedding. So we just thought it was cool, but they have no implementation plan whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so I do think that's kind of neat. I do also think it's cool, like with different ethnicities, Uh how like in several Hispanic ceremonies, like I recently did one where the groom, they like did something with a lasso and a knot. And then we did something different. Like in the African-American culture, they jumped the broom at the end. Oh, that's awesome. Not that it takes like the place of a unity candle, but like it's cool. Like all these different traditional things, but I guess the wine thing is trendy. It is trendy. And there's uh, one other thing I just thought of. I don't think this is new, but it's coming back where they pass the rings around uh, during the ceremony. And so that's kind of up and coming. It doesn't it, scare you? Uh, well, it doesn't scare me. What if they drop it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it might scare the bride and groom. I, I have no skin in the game on the rings. <sighs> well, basically, we pass the rings around during the ceremony, and everyone gets to hold it. And they're, when they hold it, they're supposed to, like, say a little blessing over them or mm-hmm. good vibes or whatever, you know, they choose to do. And then when it's time to do the rings, we ask for them back, and we get them back. I've only done it a few times, but it was kind of a cool little thing. Yeah. What are your thoughts on if there's a ring bearer? Like Don't give them the ring. If but what <laughs> what age? Like Yeah. Like under what age or what over an age that it's okay to do that? Yeah, I, I would say like four and under, maybe. Five and under? Yeah, five they get my son just turned six and he's five and I at that point, it gets kind of weird, I guess. Like, hey, here comes a, a kid that's uh, in school being yeah. your ring bearer. But, I mean, we can do whatever you want, obviously. But it's always really cute when, you know, it's a, it's someone that's... They, they know how to walk, but they're still in that fun, like, say anything stage. Because it's not going to go right. I mean, they're going to do something that, yeah. that that's memorable and fun. And, and so, yeah, I mean, we can do... We can do your dad if you want them to be a ring bearer. It's, we can do whatever you want. I had a couple... had their grandmothers be the flower girls... And and it was the cutest thing I've That's ever so seen. Sweet. I mean, both grandmothers came down and they Aww. were just throwing flowers at people. It was hilarious. And so that was really cool. So you either go really young or really old. <laughs> in, in the middle, it gets kind of weird, I think. <laughs> totally. Yeah. What about, what are your thoughts on like if they have flower girls and ring bears and let's just say they're four or five, yeah. like should the kids stand up there? Or should they go sit down? I I prefer them to go sit down. But like I said, it's their wedding. We're going to do whatever they want. I just think it 
less opportunities for distraction, less opportunities for things to kind of go haywire is the better. And so having them, they have the honor of walking down the aisle. I have them go sit down with mom and dad. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think so. I mean, are you like with, with the changes, like with technology, what is your biggest challenge like officiating a wedding or like anything that you're facing right now? Um, you know, the, the way I do my Google Doc is we can watch each other edit. And so that's been really good because they have total control. And about a week before, I'll go in and take a look. I'd say 60% of the people don't touch it. And they just they just trust the ceremony you've written and they're all in, which is great. I'm, I could do that ceremony right now if I wanted to. Um, but not really any uh, challenges have popped up for me yet in the officiating side of things. I try to make it as easy as possible to make sure that everyone is on the up and up. I mm-hmm. mean, you know exactly what's going to be said at your wedding at any moment of the day. Yep. That's awesome. So I love that you use Google Docs. That's oh, like yes. one of my favorite, favorite apps because it's free and it requires clients to get on and see. I actually, when people start working with me, I'm like, okay, give me your phone and you're going to have these things three free apps and this is how you're going to access everything and you can see it real time and it still is personal and like you said hardly anybody touches it because we have templates too i love that you have templates and you don't start from scratch every time yeah um it's just to me it's not a very productive thing so my final question is like where do couples typically find you and I mean, where do you get referrals from? Yeah. So the bulk of my referrals come from venues and wedding planners, just people I've done weddings with in the past. They enjoyed kind of working with me. We had a great relationship. The wedding went off without a hitch. And so they would like to see me again, use me again. So the bulk of that comes from uh, referrals and whatnot. You know, I I do have some ads out there and and that, that kind of bring in a few, but you know, I'm really personable and I really want that relationship to be forefront. And so um, I got, you know, the Instagram and the email address. So basically my two kind of ways that I try to, to, to connect with people. That's awesome. Well, we will put all that information in the show notes. Awesome. Down below so that you guys can email Wes. Make sure that you follow him on Instagram. And if you are married by Wes, after you get your photos, like, please, please, please share and tag. And as a planner, when people ask me, like, how do you get your clients? Still to this day, the number one referral is word of mouth. Yep. It's very powerful when people are happy. When I started my business, Facebook, none of that existed. Like Mm. online marketing and ads and it it was magazines and that's it. So it's like you really had to work hard to show people, A, you care, B, you know what you're doing, and C, you're open to learning. Yeah. So I think that's really important. So please share. And, you know, if if your officiant asks you, like, please review me and, like, give me feedback. Mm -hmm. Like, people don't know what they can fix if you don't tell them and so I think being open to having that feedback like creates a a better experience for you know people in the future absolutely so be sure to check out Wes's Instagram shoot him an email if you're getting married or if you're a planner or a designer and you need somebody that is fun and creative and out of the box Wes is your guy Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. Absolutely. Let's do a wedding together soon. I know. We have several, I think, coming up. Well, let's go. We're ready. We are hitting it in busy season. Oh, yes. And so we're excited. It's going to be great. Thank you all so much for listening to Weddings Unveiled, and have a great day. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.